Welcome, today we are picking the colors for your next deck. So I hope your coffee is warm because there is a lot to explore. Now why is it important to pick your colors? Personally, I like picking my colors first because when you are picking your colors and when you have a color in all of your decks and you have all colors represented, you can make sure that you can get all of the cool cards from the new sets into your deck all of them that you want get really involved into magic and you can play the game in the way that you like or that's how it's supposed to be it's not always like that but we will get into that as well now personally i got some weird color combinations first off i started with four colors without green brea it's really not a good color combination to start with when you are a starting player it really forces you to play a very controlling game and I didn't even know that so I played it aggressively in a sort of artifact like recursion deck. So four colors is not really beginner friendly and that's actually why I'm starting this video because I think <laughs> I learned a lot about what I find fun but I learned it a little bit too late and I already built two or three decks. I started to get into two colors but that's a little bit too few <laughs> i would say until i got to simic actually which is a really strong color combination and it's famous for it people will kind of look at you a little bit weirdly when you're playing simic but then i got into three colors and that's really balanced and only then did i get to learn why it was i think the best um, amount of colors to begin with and at that point i had so many decks i was already a friend and an franchised magic player and it was actually too late so today we'll cover all 31 color combinations because actually there isn't really a wrong choice you should just pick what's most fun to you and i will help you pick the one that will actually be fun even if you think another one was fun if when you just began the video there's a lot to pick from and we'll go from mono white to wooburg but don't worry i will explain everything to you so in magic the gathering every color has its own unique identity and you can identify with such a color if you like the philosophy or the playstyle. now let's go over the colors in wooburg order so first of all white the w of wooburg uh, focuses on order on the little creatures on them working together and on creating a really big board and only then will it become strong often now it emphasizes life gain a little bit so if that's something you like there's something in there for you but i think the token creation is the most unique part of the color now it plays like this because it wants the whole team to work together it wants to create a sort of order and it wants every piece of your board to work together for the greater good now if you don't like building a really big board when it could get destroyed i think this is a little bit of a weird color for you <laughs> maybe not yours um, some iconic cards that really warp white as a color are for example swords of plowshares cards that exile creatures why it's actually really good at removing creatures i would say because they also have really good board wipes wrath of god being one uh, by destroying all creatures white has really become the board wipe color um together with some other ones but white's really good at it and of course white's really good at the token creation so the main strategies you will be playing are actually really diverse with white you can go a really aggro strategy where you are playing really small creatures that quickly win you the game you could play a control like color um, where you are mostly focusing on the board wipes with the white color so you're really controlling by thinking ahead by um, playing oftentimes sorceries that really slow down your opponents or you're playing life game which is a little bit more niche but still a really broad subject i would say um but that's a smaller theme i think aggro and control are mostly wh where white is going and it's really a color that is uh, changing between aggressive red green strategies or uh slower i would say 
blue, maybe black strategy. So it's, it's really a support color in my eyes. Now blue is all about knowledge. Blue wants you to feel smart as well. And you will have to think a lot about what you're doing when you're playing the color. Often it's smaller pieces aren't a strong part. It's really the strategy around it that's really strong. It's often very synergistic in more like a tempo kind of way. In a sort of way where you're playing a lot of instants or you're playing at a really fast pace. Uh, controlling the game throughout your opponent's turns or you're playing actually slower for example with the white color where you are kind of taking a step back and thinking about your later game having the instance be uh, an asset to you now iconic cards for blue are for example counter spell there are a lot of counters in blue so you're really waiting for your opponents to do stuff but there are, are also very strong draw cards like Brainstorm where you're drawing a lot of cards then putting some back, you're really planning, you're really thinking about your game plan many steps ahead and then there are ways to bounce creatures and winning in a way that is focusing on tempo. Now Blue really wants to control the game so they have counter spells but also they have uh, tempo manipulation like bounce spells so it's really thinking about slowing the game down so that other strategies can win out. That's why flying is really good in this color, for example. Um, there's also a lot of card draw in here, but also a lot of combo because you're really preparing for that one turn where you will win eventually. And the little sub theme is mill, where you're trying to get rid of your opponent's library and really control what your opponent can do. Now there's black and black is really about the feeling of power, I would say, in gameplay mode, of course. It really is strong at destroying your opponents, making them discard, making you reanimate your creatures that they just destroyed. It's often about using life and creatures as a resource, anything to further your game plan. You want a very simple game plan, but one that is really strong. For example, iconic cards in the color are mostly the strongest ones. For example, Demonic Tutor, where you can just search a library for any card. That's really a black card in my book for uh, Commander, because it's all about, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're just doing it very well. <laughs> for example, Grave Pact is another one where you force your opponents to do what you want by a very strong uh, effect. That's often not really fun for your opponent. So main strategies are sacrifice decks where you're constantly playing with your resources, sacrificing them, pinging your opponents, reanimating them maybe with some of the strongest reanimation cards. And other strategies are, for example, discarding the cards from your opponents where they can do nothing and you can do everything. And there's a little bit of a life gain theme as well, but more in the way that you are strongly draining your opponent's life totals by dealing damage to them. Uh, and I think that's the most important part for this color. Now, red is a little bit of a weird one in Commander because we all think red should be fast. It is still pretty quick, but <laughs> I would say it's not about the aggression so much as the chaos nowadays. It's more about do what you want and it will be random and fun and you are still doing some direct damage you still have a lot of hasty creatures and you still want to win quickly but you're also doing it in a really weird way now this is because red is a very impulsive color um it seeks freedom it wants you not to really plan ahead too much it wants you to live by the moment of course there are Cards like Lightning Bolt that we all know very well where you're just dealing a few damage points um, and all the Chandras that really help you deal a lot of damage and create mana really quickly but then lose it again. Um, but there are also some control aspects like Blood Moon which disrupts your opponents by turning all of their lands into mountains and you don't care because you only care about mountains. Um, some main strategies are aggro so yeah still aggressive but more in the way that you want to go quickly and pair it with some co uh, colors that have really big creatures to have a lot of damage really quickly um i think cards that help you deal more damage or deal double damage are really core to the color 
Uh, it's also a little bit about tempo, but more in the way that you want to churn through your deck, get all of your cards out, then discarding a lot of them. Not really card value, but more that you want to find the things that you really want. It's all about wanting stuff. And then there are a lot of chaos themes where you're having everyone get random cards or wheeling their decks or... Um, you don't know what you're getting out of your deck. Everyone is just exiling the cards instead of getting them into your hand. No one has card value anymore. And everyone just has to do whatever comes from the top of their deck. That's what you want. And then there's green. The green is the color of big creatures and a lot of ramp. And those are very core elements of the game. So green gets to be a very strong color. It wants the natural world to win green, but it's nowadays more about any land, basically. Um, some iconic cards are ramp cards, Lenoir Elves, maybe. <laughs> uh, if you want to look at creatures that create mana anyways. But there's also big creatures like Crater of Behemoth, with which everyone knows because it deals so much damage out of nowhere. Um, main strategies are ramp. <laughs> Some of the best ramp cards, I think all of them, <laughs> are from green. Cultivate, for example, one that you know because it's so efficient. Some big creatures that you will know from every green deck ever. Just 6 Xs that will win because of it. And then there's a little bit of a sub-theme of having some power on the board. Uh, so having 4 more power of your creatures or having a lot of power that will get you a lot of cards. That's a really green thing to do. So those are the colors, but then you also have to pick the amount of colors. And those all have plus sides and downsides as well. So there's monocolor, which is picking one color that we have just talked about. Now, this does mean that you get a really focused deck um, and you have no mana problems at all. You always have all the colors you need because you just have one color. Another benefit is the devotion mechanic where you are uh, gaining more things because of the amount of colored pips uh, you have. So for example, a green green and one uh, mana creature counts as two green pips. Um, it's very focused, it's very synergistic, but it's not very versatile. You are not getting all of the cards you want. Um, for example, if we are picking two colored decks, then uh, you have a little bit more synergy. Um, there are still some weaknesses left often because, for example, if you're playing red and green, you're still not really in the controlling type colors usually. Um, and I would say your mana base gets a little bit worse, but not a lot. So I think this is already often just better than one color. And as I said, I think the best beginning amount of colors is the three color deck which has a broader strategy and doesn't even have to have weaknesses. Um, it has a doable mana base. You will have, you will need to work at it a little bit, but people can help you with that. Um, and it's still very focused, but then you start to lose focus when you pick more colors. So for example, what I did first, four colors, it's very hard to get a great mana base, first of all. Um, it will be focused on being not something so for example if you don't have green uh, the deck will be all about control it will not really be about ramp it will want everyone to go slower um, and it's often very thematic so you will need to love the theme for example of artifacts or for example of the big creatures um, or maybe we're talking dragons in five colors so you will really need to love the theme more than anything. And if you love it, still go for it, I would say. But it's a really hard deck to learn for your first um, deck. Unless you're really smart. So go for it in that case. Um, five colors, also a possibility. I would say, again, just pick it for the theme if you love it. Um, but it's also fun because you can play any card in those decks. You have all the colors, so you can play any card. Um, the big downside is that the mana base will be really hard and will basically rule your games. Um, some games you won't get your color and you can't play the game. <laughs> so 
really work hard on that uh, ramp, on the color fixing, and you will be fine, but it will mostly be what your deck is about. Uh, so, though, so I would say pick three color, maybe two color uh, for your first decks, and then you will know the plus and minus sides of every amount. Now let's go over every color combination or if they're not a combination, every color, and talk about what they play like. So we're going up, uh, over every mono color. If you think this is boring, just uh, skip ahead. But I think it will not be because we will look at the prime commanders um, and the strategies and go a little bit more in depth about what you will find and why it will be fun for you. Now, mono white represents order, law, community, protection it wants to create a big field it wants to create a civilization i would say a prime commander example is morale shield of argive which creates a bunch of soldiers and wants you to build on top of them you will need a lot of protection for your soldiers or otherwise your plan will get ruined but you can snowball out of control because of the amount of soldiers you have and if that sounds fun to you i think white might be a strong color for you maybe combine it with some other colors would be my advice but if you really like the focus part of this white might be for you now some strategies as i said are life gain token generation there are a lot of board wipes which really go against having a lot of creatures it could be about control but i think the token strategy is the most on color brand <laughs> Um, their strengths are that they can be very defensive, they can have very specific uh, removals, you will have a lot of answers to things that a lot of other people won't have answers to. Um, and if you like to be the one in game that really has the answers and you want to argue with other people whether you should remove those things and they have to give you a lot back because you're playing mono white um, <laughs> and you have a lot of weaknesses, um, then that's good for you <laughs> um the weaknesses are limited card draw and that's i think one of the worst things that you will have um there are some amounts of card draws that slowly gain you more cards but oftentimes you will get no cards in hand you will rely on synergy to create any offensive plays, and when they fail you probably won't have a backup because you are not really resilient in <laughs> your deck when your creatures get removed this game over so you, you need to protect them and if you can't you kind of lose you do also struggle to deal with non-creature threats uh, because no real way to prepare for them uh, often they can remove your creatures and then you're kind of gone so that's the downside if you still want to go ahead go ahead <laughs> now next up is blue where you want to really feel strategic uh, you want to feel smart, you want to manipulate people, create illusions, sort of win the game through subterfuge, I would say. Now, a prime commander example is Baral, the chief of compliance, a commander that really wants you to work around instants and sorceries. I think those are really blue, they are really uh, short, they are really helping you plan ahead and it says whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell you want to work with counter spells you may draw a card and discard a card so you're really planning ahead choosing the cards that you really need and having the perfect amount of counters in your hand to defeat your opponents and you want to win by drawing a lot of cards and being really smart so this will be the color for you in that case now there are aside from the great card advantage strength a lot of uh, downsides as well now i think ramp is one of the big ones um, you will need a lot of probably artifacts to gain you a lot of mana and you are probably relying on specific cards for your win conditions so you will need a really good deck building plan to make sure that you don't really lose those win conditions or otherwise you will just spin in circles and not really do a lot except for slowing the game now, black, which is all about the power fantasy, it's all about sacrificing things, life, creatures, and it's all about death and reanimation, and it's about willing to pay a price for your own greater strength. A prime commander example is Krik, the son of Yawgmoth. It's a really big 
commander you would say seven mana but you can pay life to play it uh, to make it cheaper i think that's already starting off strong um, then for each black mana in a cost you may pay two life as well rather than pay that mana cost so you're really playing things quickly but you're paying a lot of life so that's also really dangerous and whenever you cast a black spell you put a plus one counter on crick he has lifelink so maybe you can get some of that life back to be able to play more cards now black has really strong removal it can recur cards from the graveyard it has some really strong mana abilities um, if you're playing mono black that is um, if you're combining it with other colors it works a little bit less um, and it has access to really versatile tutors if you have the money now some weaknesses are that it often needs to sacrifice resources you're paying a lot of life in this deck for example um, and you will need to think about that and without the ramp synergy um, you could be slower than other uh strategies so you will need those specific cards so it can be a really expensive monocolor to play then is red uh, which embodies chaos freedom impulse red decks really play quickly or they want to and aggressively and you should be okay with defeating your first opponents first talk about this in your playgroup maybe but uh, red is really about defeating those late game strategies so that you can be one-on-one -on -one with some other aggressive more or more aggressive decks their strategies are for example being really aggressive they want to burn your uh, opponents out they can be all about artifact synergies but i think the explosive damage part is the most fun now torbran is my prime commander example for red it's a four command four mana dwarf um, that says if a red source you control would deal damage to an opponent uh, or a permanent an opponent controls it deals that much damage plus two instead now there are some uh, commanders that also double damage for non-creature spells um, but i think torbrand is a little bit more versatile because it also works with creatures they just need to be a red source and i think that's really on theme for red that they want anything that deals damage and they want it to do it well so i think torbrand is really a great red commander if you're loving the quick killing strategy now explosive damage is one of the strengths red can also be really fast it can have haste it can uh, kill your opponents out of nowhere if you're building towards it smartly so you will need a lot of planning actually it's really not about being dumb it's about uh, planning ahead and dealing enough damage you need to think you need to count there are things you need to think about uh, some weaknesses are that the card draw is limited to often only exiling the cards and being able to play them that turn um, some long-term research that's resource advantages are hard to get by because uh, you won't be really drawing those cards often and uh, red can struggle to recover from board wipes but is i think a little bit more versatile um, uh, more able to get back into the game than white and then there's green i think this is the strongest color to be monocolor in um, and i think secondly there's black um, but this one is all about growing it's all about nature having big creatures on the battlefield um, it loves harmony as well but it also loves raw power so you can go a lot of ways with this my prime example for green is selvala heart of the wilds it's a commander that loves big creatures it says whenever another creature enters its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature um, so meaning you want to play bigger and bigger creatures and you want to be the biggest on the board then you may pay one green mana to tap selvala and you may add x mana where x is the greatest power among creatures you control so you want to have a 10 10 on the board and you want to make 10 mana with selvala only paying one to tap her of course and then you want to play even bigger creatures because your big creatures helped you ramp and that's also the strength of green ramp and big creatures i think are the biggest ones um also strengthening them but i think those are the most important um also there will be some weaknesses so for example you will have limited interaction with 
removing creatures. Um, it's There are some fight spells, so when you are the biggest creature on the board, you can remove some creatures. But usually you don't really have board wipes and stuff like that. Um, and so you will just be, need to be the one to put the creatures down on the board and put the aggression on your opponents. Otherwise, there won't be a lot you will be able to do. If your opponents start having the bigger creatures, you're really down and you're not really winning anymore. We're moving on to two colors, starting with white and blue, so Azorius. They focus on law and control as well, uh, but also they are more tempo oriented often. My prime commander example is Elminster. Uh, maybe a weird pick, but uh, it's a legendary uh, planeswalker that um, can be your commander. Um, he says whenever you scry, so scrying I think is really Azorius because you are planning ahead, thinking about what you need, building a strategy. Um, so whenever you scry the next instant or sorcery, which also Azorius, you cost this turn, costs X less to cost where X the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. So you're really making your cards cheaper, you're playing big sorceries, and I think that's really something you want to do in these colors. Um, Elminster can scry himself, he can draw some cards, and he can exile the top card of your library to create a number of 1-1 one uh, one -one blue fairy dragons uh, with flying um, equal to the card's mana value. So you want to plan ahead, you want to have a big card on the top of your library, and then you want to create a lot of flying creatures that can win you the game. I think this is the perfect example of a cool Azorius deck that's all about those strengths. So controlling your opponents, making flying creatures, um, getting a lot of tempo out and playing uh, enough cards to exactly kill your opponents. I think that's great for Azorius. Now, there are some weaknesses. You will want to play a little bit more slowly and you want to make your opponents more slow. Um, they're sometimes more reactive than proactive, even if there is a change. Um, since a long time, <laughs> Wizards has tried to make Azorius more proactive, but kind of failing. <laughs> um, and you really need to work on your timing and control. You really need to be smart with your instance. Um, and you really need to know when to play what. Uh, so there's a lot of thinking involved, and if you want that, I think Azorius is your color combination. Now the mirror, so blue and black, is all about secrecy, manipulating your opponents and exploiting their weaknesses. The mirror really thrives on deception. A prime commander for me for the mirror is Captain Negathrod, <laughs> I think. This is a pirate, so that's already cool. Um, that's all about horse in a way but it's more about the strategy behind it because um, he says whenever a horror you control deals combat damage to a player they mill that many cards then at the beginning of your end step you choose a target artifact or creature card in an opponent's graveyard that was put there from their library this turn so milled and then you put it onto the battlefield under your control so this is all about plundering treasures from your opponent um, and bringing them under your control. So that, that mind control part is really very demir. Um, very demir. <laughs> very mindful. Um, and I think the horrors are also on theme for this color combination. Because often the demir have really big secrets that they're hiding under the seas. Um, <laughs> so that, that's really what he is doing as well. Uh, some general strengths from for this color combination are that they are really good at disrupting their opponent's strategies. Uh, Demir is all about controlling the elements that are outside of the battlefield, so the hand, the library, things like that. Maybe manipulating graveyards or stuff like that. But there are some weaknesses. Now, there are, aren't really a lot of creatures. That's why I like this commander, because it's all about stealing those from your opponents and I think that's a way to get creatures um, they're often really slow to start you really need to think about what you're doing because you have limited resources even though you are stealing them from the, your opponents um, and they really struggle with some answers to for example enchantments or artifacts even though that weakness is getting um, minimalized nowadays but it's still a, a, a weakness I would say 
Now for Rakdos, I really had to pick Rakdos as a prime commander example and we're doing things out of order because Rakdos is all about chaos. It wants to destruct things from your opponents and it doesn't really care about what it's building itself. It's all about doing what it wants right now and that's kind of the weakness as well because you're burning up your resources really fast even though your opponent is as well. You want the battlefield to be empty, you want it to be uh, sad <laughs> and you want to be happy because everyone is sad. Now, <laughs> Rakdos is a perfect commander I would say because it's all about dealing quick damage but then also gets you a little bit of value and we really need that. Um, so Rakdos really thrives on that battlefield that's empty because everything was destroyed. Um, this big demon can't be cast unless an opponent lost life this turn so you will need to fuel him with a little bit of pain. Then for 4 mana you can create a 6-6 flying trample demon. So that means that you have a really big creature already on the board. So that's an upside. And creature spells you cost cost 1 less to cost for each 1 life your opponents have lost this turn. So you will have a lot of big creatures that you can play. And there will be a little bit of late game strategy mixed in with your aggro strategies. Now this is important because some strengths of uh, Rakdos are that they can be really aggressive. I think they always are. <laughs> they're about discarding, they're about sacrificing, they're about killing, they're about sometimes reanimation but mostly about killing things. Um, and there won't be a lot left. So <laughs> they're fast and aggressive but they also can run out really quickly. Uh, that's a weakness uh, mostly. It's also really high risk because if you are losing those strategies there's not many ways to come back and I think Rakdos is a little bit slow to begin actually because um, you don't really have a lot of ramp. I think you don't really have ramp in these decks basically there are some ways to shortly get a lot of mana but then it's gone. <laughs> so um, you will need a good strategy of mana rocks and stuff like that but that's not the best way to ramp uh, anyone knows. Then there's Gruul, also aggressive. It is all about raw power and nature and growth. Uh, a prime commander example for me would be Rurik Far, uh, a really big creature or two actually <laughs> that have to attack. I think that's really Gruul. And whenever a player casts a non creature spell, which Gruul hates, Rorik Far deals 6 damage to that player. So there's a lot of explosive damage and it's all about playing creature strategies. And I think that can still be very strategic because if you're playing creatures there are a lot of enter the battlefield effects and ways to control the battlefield anyways because you're playing creature, creature spells instead of those pesky non-creatures. Um, some big strategies are being aggressive, but also a lot of landfall or uh, land strategies because you're green. Um, ramping into really big creatures and then being really quick in dealing explosive amounts of damage. Um, you really want to have that overwhelming battlefield presence. And if you can force your opponents to play a creature strategy as well, if you can stop them from doing non-creature stuff, you're probably winning the game. So that's why I think Rurik Far is a really good Example of a great commander for this color combination. Um, some weaknesses are that your card draw is again limited. Uh, green has some and red has some uh, quick ways to draw cards. Um, crew can also be vulnerable to board wipes, but I think it's mitigated by the amount of mana they can create. Um, and they can be weak against control strategies because if you can't get that ball rolling, then you could get controlled out of the game and you will be a target because you are such a great aggressive color combination. Now Celestia really combines that amount of white weeniness and green uh, harmony <laughs> into making a lot of creatures and making them big. I think this is the way to play white if you want to create those massive amounts of tokens. Um, it's all about working together and that's why I think Hamza is the greatest commander for this color combination. Uh, it's a really big spell you would say, but uh, Hamza gets a mana reduction for each creature you control with a plus one counter on it. Now plus one counters are really important I think for going white strategies, because if you can put one plus one counter on ten creatures, that's ten power. That's basically why. 
10 creature spells you cast cost 1 less when Hamza is out on the battlefield um, for each creature you control with the plus 1 counter as well. So other creatures will be easier to play as well. So here are, you are still playing a creature strategy. Notice how red, green and white really want that. Um, but you're also growing your creatures and making them cheaper so you're getting more creatures. I think this makes the deck really... Uh, well, more suited to get back into the game when it gets board wiped. And I think that's really important for the color combination. So you're really playing into those strengths. If you can mitigate the weaknesses somewhat, you are looking at a great deck. Um, now, some strengths are you're really efficient at creating more creatures. You have a lot of life gain synergies. You have excellent board presence. You will be on the board <laughs> um, and you will be affecting the game at least. There will also be a great synergy between your creatures, maybe your enchantments, um, and you will really be building that civilization. Um, now, some weaknesses are that if you get board wiped, usually you won't be able to get into the game that easily. Now, Hamza mitigates some, that somewhat, and that's really what I'm looking for in a commander for a great color combination. Um, you also are limited in your card draw that is getting stronger. Um, but you really need to work with those creatures and making them draw you cards. Um, and there is not a lot of non-creature interaction in this color combination. Um, but it can be really specific again. So you will need to um, really take that interaction and use it to the max. If you are able to do that, I think this is a great color combination for you. White and black together creates Orsov, which is about making a hierarchy or being the strongest one on your battlefield. You want your tokens, your little creatures to work for you. You want to sacrifice them, make them die for you, and you want to control your opponents while creating value for yourself. A prime commander example will be Teza Karlov, uh, which is a commander that really loves your creatures dying. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, it triggers an additional time. Doubling effects are really strong, that's why this commander is really strong. Um, and Teza Karlov really loves sacrificing your creatures. This is also a strategy for the color combination, the aristocrat strategy, which wants you to sacrifice a bunch of tokens and win the game that way. Um, some strengths are that the color combination is really synergistic with the life drain effects um, and they have strong control over creatures on the board. Now some weaknesses is, are th that um, they are a little bit more slow. They re don't really have that big ramp strategy or big card draw uh, uh, in that for that matter. Maybe black has a bunch, but um, you will need that synergy to really get you that great uh, card advantage. Um, and you will need to sacrifice a bunch of resources to gain advantage. So that could be a drawback if your opponents get to dismantle your operation. You need every little bit of your machine to work and then you are a really strong strategy. Um, so make sure your opponents don't think that you are a strong player. If you are looking for that Chaos Goblin vibe, I think is it or blue red is your color. This color combination blends creativity and chaos with the controlling parts of blue. Um, they focus on experimentation and explosive incense and sorceries. Um, a prime commander example for me would be Mystics of the Is Magnus, um, a four mana goblin wizard. So it's a little bit expensive to play. Um, this is also why you need that control in your deck. Um, it says, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery with mana value greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter. So this deck really wants you to play a bunch of um, instants or sorceries and storm off, which is really is it to me. Uh, and then your instant and sorcery spells cost one less to cast for each experience counter you have. So all of your instants and sorceries will be easier to cast and you will be able to storm off more quickly. Some strong strategies are spell sling uh, strategies, which are all about burning out your opponents with a bunch of storm effects. Um, some strengths are that you will have some explosive turns where you're winning out of really nowhere. You have some strong synergy for your spells effects or maybe your card draw effects. 
um, and you are excellent at burning through your own deck to get to your strategies. Some weaknesses are that you really need that spell slinging thing. If your opponents are stopping this in some ways, you can get stopped in your tracks. You're really weak against early aggression because you don't have the strongest creature base. Um, and your win conditions can be inconsistent if you don't get to get to them um, because you will be very specific in the way that you will win. Now, Golgari, I think, is the most focused reanimation color combination. It's all about the cycle of life and death. You want your creatures to die, make them do something while they die, and then get them back to life, creating really big creatures that can storm off, um, creating an impossible to stop force on your side. A great commander is another experienced commander, which is Marin of Clan Nel Toth. It's a four mana shaman that says when a creature dies another creature dies you get an experience counter then at the beginning of your end step you really could be called slow if you're Golgari um, at the beginning of your end step choose target creature card in your graveyard and if that card's mana value is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have you return it to the battlefield otherwise put it into your hand note that you can keep doing this uh, so one creature could be returned every turn um, the weakness here is that you will need to end until the wait until the end of your turn so you're a little bit slow um, but you do get to create big uh, creatures that you will get back on the battlefield over and over this recursion is a really big strategy for golgari there's also a bit of sacrifice themes because your recursion is so good you also want to focus on big creatures you are green after all and you want to bring them back every time um, now, some weaknesses are that you are really vulnerable to graveyard hate. Um, this could really stop your hurt strategy if you don't have any creatures to reanimate. Well, you're kind of gone. <laughs> um, and you are slower to ramp up because you need to build up an extra resource, which is your graveyard. Now, if you do get that extra resource, you have an extra resource, so you will be more uh, suited to get back into the game. Um, but you do need to get there. The probably, I think, by most people called the worst color combination is red and white. Uh, so Boros. This is a color combination about military discipline, about working together uh, in a, an aggressive fashion. And they want to focus on combat and teamwork. But combat is really not the most important part about Commander because... It needs you to get into the combat phase, and that's often hard to do. Um, a prime commander example for me would be Feather the Redeemed. It's actually from Boros, so that's one plus side, but also it's really combat focused, even though it works with instants and sorceries. Um, so Feather is a cheap angel. Uh, it has flying, so it can get in really easily. Uh, so great for a commander that you don't want to die. Um, and it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets a creature you control so it's still about that creature strategy you exile the card instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves then if you do return if you do you do return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step this means that you have some recursion you have some late game uh, because those small uh, spells that focus on your own creatures that make them stronger in that combat phase uh, those spells get returned um, you are great at aggro you are great at equipment that's a really big theme for this strategy you are aggressive you love to play in the combat zone <laughs> and if you get there you must win um, you are efficient with your creatures, so that's a really strong part here. But there are a lot of weaknesses. So card draw, the biggest one. Um, also ramp, <laughs> not that good. Um, you often run out of resources really quickly and then you struggle with getting back into the game. Um, now, Feather is one way to circumvent a lot of those weaknesses. So I think you need some of those commanders that do the heavy lifting for your deck. You need a lot of synergy to get this color combination to work and then the one that i first made my strongest deck with uh, which is simic it's actually the easiest color combination i think uh, in the dual colors um, to make a strong deck with 
because it has the strong creatures and the ramp from green and it has the strong interaction um, and the card draw from blue. Now this blends nature and innovation in its flavor, focusing on the growth and the perfection of life forms. Um, you want to play with a lot of weird creatures. And that's why I think Azuri Claw of Progress is my prime commander example. This is again an experienced commander, I don't know, I just think they're very fitting for their uh, color combinations. Um, Azuri works with smaller creatures, so whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters, you get an experience counter and then at the beginning of combat on your turn you put x plus one counters on another target creature you control where x is the number of experience counters you have azuri was also my first simic commander so i can really uh, vouch for him being a fun commander for yourself to play um, some weaknesses of azuri himself are that he's really easy to remove um, and then your game plan will be stopped um, but you are blue-green, so you can get back into the game really easily. Ramp and card draw are your strengths. Um, you work really well with plus one counter synergies, creating really big creatures most of the time. You have great value. Um, so if you love value, great uh, color combination. Um, and you have a great synergy between those creature spells and normal spells. Um, which I think is great to have a balance on. There are some weaknesses, but I think it's minor. Um, you do need that board presence. And if you don't have the board presence, it can be hard to get started. Um, and you have limited removal options, which will be a weakness if you are not the one going fastest, which you probably will be. Um, so. That was it for the two colors. Now we're going on to three colors, which I think is the best. Continuing with three colors, we have Esper. Their flavor is that of mostly control. They want to manipulate the game. They want to slow the game as well, but they mostly want to calculate how to win the game. So this is a go-getter color combination. I think this really, for example, stops the weakness of white blue of having to wait back because of the color black which gains them a lot of strategy and synergy um, some strategies are control life gain often artifact synergies and combo strategies uh, so alayla i think is a really great commander for the scholar combination she has a lot of abilities <laughs> making her uh, able to at least deal or trade with your opponents but she also says creatures with flying get an extra power but she also says whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell you create a 1-1 blue fairy creature token with flying and that's the kind of thing you want to do you want to create more creatures you want to have a lot of small things that work together really well and have that strong synergy with artifacts uh, mostly um you also have accident control uh, on the battlefield, so you want to slowly build your game plan. Um, you are slow to build it um, and you are vulnerable to faster decks, but if you can control them, you can probably slowly get through the game with your combo pieces. Then Junt, which is all about primal power and primal instincts and savage growth. Um, they also embrace death and rebirth because we do have that Golgari combination here. Um, but they can also be really aggressive from that cruel uh, combination. Their stra strategies involve a lot of sacrifice, a lot of ramp and big creatures and graveyard recursion. Making for I think the best creature combination that you can create. And that's why I also think Hansi is a great commander for this color in general. He says each creature spell you cast with mana value 4 or greater, so you do want those big creatures, has blitz. Um, blitz meaning you may choose to cast the spell for its blitz, blitz cost, and if you do it gains haste, and when the creature dies you draw a card. Then you need to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, which is the drawback. So you do play with a hedonistic color combination, um, but you do get a lot of value from it as well. 
Uh, the blitz cost every time is equal to the mana cost of the creature. So you still get to play them, but you get to play them with haste. And the blitz cost will be one less for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. And it's pretty easy to play handsy when you are playing a green deck that ramps really quickly. Some weaknesses involve uh, that your sacrificing resources could backfire if you're not really managing it very well. Um, but you also get a lot of value from sacrificing those resources. So that weakness is really mitigated. Um, you could be a little bit slower than the more aggro aggro decks, but I think you're still pretty aggro. Um, so again, the weaknesses of three color combination decks are mitigated a lot. Um, as long as you can get that mana in, but you are green. So you are pretty efficient um, at getting the right mana on the battlefield. Naya is the color combination of red, green and white. I think best known for its dinosaurs. Uh, it focuses on the strength of nature and working together with a bunch of small creatures maybe. Um, caring for those creatures and about the combat. Um, because you have those big creatures and you want to fight well with them. Um, I think a prime commander example is Atla Pelani, the nest tender. She creates egg creatures with Defender and whenever an egg you control dies, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card and you may put it onto the battlefield. Um, so you get to play a lot of big creatures which you want to do in this color combination and you have a lot of big creatures as well. You will need a bunch of mana but that's again easy to get because you have the green color. Um, and then you want to win the game by breaking your opponents with combat but this time they need to stop your combat phase because otherwise you will win with those big creatures um, also you can play in a strategy that involves planning with those creatures in a way that you make sure that all of those creatures together do win you the game so protection is in here with that white color you're not just aggressive you're also protecting your board and making sure that your strategy is a winning one some weaknesses do involve that when you get board wiped, you do quickly lose, but you do have protection. Um, and it's easier to get back into the game when you have white in, or green, <laughs> green in your color combination. Um, you do struggle with uh, card draw still. You don't have blue or black, which are the better card draw colors. Uh, but with three colors combined, you can still find enough card draw, I think. Um, to have a great strategy. Then there's Band, uh, green, white and blue, which I think is combining the creature strategy with a little bit of um, planning and control. Uh, this uh, color combination represents uh, community growth and balance, I would say. Uh, so Tulane is a great uh, commander example. It has the ability to say whenever you cast a creature spell, you draw a card and then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. This gives you ramp, this gives you card draw and a creature synergy. Um, and then for three mana, you may return target creature card you control to its owner's hand. This can help you, this commander can help you storm off really quickly. You just need the right amount of mana, which you will get in this color combination. Um, it's really great with tokens often, really great with life gain, card advantage and with ramp. So this is really a versatile uh, color combination. Um, it's also really efficient in ramping towards those creatures. It can play a lot of them, can go wide, can go big, can do a lot. Um, it does have weaknesses because it can be a little bit slower to get that board presence on. Um, but I think still, if you are playing it right, you should be able to really uh, build quickly with those creatures. You do rely on creatures for your uh, synergy, but for example with Tulane, uh, you can return them to your hand when you really need those uh, synergy pieces. Then there's Grixis, which focuses on manipulating the board, being a really great control combination. It focuses on ambition, that power... Um, that you really want and a lot of chaos that you want to create. That's why I think Bellacor, which is actually a sort of um, typo commander, but I think the Dark Master is a great prime commander example. 
This is a demon commander that says when it enters the battlefield, so already uh, giving you some value, you draw X cards and you lose X life. So you are still playing, paying the, that life, but um, X will be the number of demons you control. So you want to play a lot of demons, which are on their own really strong. Um, and then you want to play a big commander, but it will draw you a lot of cards, so you will get um, your value. And uh, Bellacor has Lord of Torment, which says whenever another demon ends the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So this is a great control commander and working with demons means you are the embodiment of ambition and destruction. Some weaknesses are that the color combination is vulnerable to aggressive strategies again. Uh, you only have red that is really uh, quick strategy and otherwise you will need to control them which is a one-on-one -on -one strategy that doesn't really work um, and you do rely on high cost spells which means that with a slower to ramp up color combination you can be pretty slow but as you are a great control combination i think you will be fine add even more calculation and ruthlessness to golgari and you get soul tie green blue and black embraces the cycle of life and death even more while having a more exploitative nature. A prime commander example for me would be Moldrotha the Gravetide because it's natural, it's all about recursion and it's even more about planning ahead. I think Moldrotha doesn't really want to control the world but it just has to. <laughs> Um, some strategies and archetypes are graveyard recursion, but you do focus a little bit more on control and you have that cynic, simic, perfect combination of ramp and value. Their strengths are numberless. I would say the strongest one is the graveyard synergies where you keep drawing cards, keep fueling your graveyard and keep coming back no matter what your opponents do. But you do need to be reliant a little bit on those graveyard strategies, even though you do get to refill those that graveyard faster. Um, you are slower without ramp, but <laughs> you do have ramp. I couldn't find any more weaknesses. Honestly, this is a really strong color combination and I would say the strongest color combination you can go with. So if you want to go strong, I would say pick this one. Cheskai is flavorfully all about finding enlightenment. It's all about working up to that perfect state of being. It's about discipline, about slowing down, about creativity, about being faster when you need to. And it's all about that perfect sense of control between slowing down and quickening. Um, it's all ways I think focusing on non-creatures. So there is that weakness of not having creatures um, but i think let's look at the prime commander example for me kaikar winds fury is a creature <laughs> um, that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell so uh, I, it seems always to work with non-creatures um, you create a creature a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying you also have some strong flying creatures by the way in this color combination um, you are more about offense than defense in this com combination, but you are about control as well. Um, you With Kaikar, you can sacrifice a spirit to add a red mana. So you are really storming off. You are really a spell slinger uh, deck. Really more about the um, smaller spells than the big ones. Um, and you are really... I'm saying really a lot. <laughs> And you are a combo deck. You want to go off in that one turn where you are quickening. Um, and you are working towards that with strong card advantage. That's really strong. A little bit less ramp, but because you are controlling, you can stop uh, that weakness a bit. Um, you do have some weaknesses because you are slower. You don't have a lot of creatures. So you will need to think about that. You will need to purposefully put in some creatures to block those aggro decks, preferably some walls or something um, that can force your opponents to slow down and not attack you. That's really important for your deck. Um, you are reliant on your synergies, but more so because you need some strong win conditions. So you need some late game things to work towards where 
with one or two sorceries you can win because oftentimes your synergy pieces are really easy to remove um so either you need to be really controlling and be really smart at that or which i prefer <laughs> um is to have some win conditions multiple ones in your deck that just work on their own but are hard to get to because you can plan ahead really well with this color combination Adding black to Boros makes red, white and black for Mardu really forces it into that combat strength theme. This color combination is all about aggression, using its power to make sure it's even stronger on the battlefield. It's about order, making multiple creatures strong, but also one creature strong and that just makes it about being strong in the moment which red is of course um i think the prime commander example for me is ishin the two heavens as one because it's so much about that uh, combat phase if a creature attacking causes the triggered ability of a permanent you control the trigger it triggers an additional time so again the doubling that is really important um your strategies are often just that you are really aggro um but with that doubling of a permanence a uh, ability when it attacks you do get some longevity as well um it's a little bit about reanimation but i would say it's more really combat focused the strength is being aggressive fast having great synergy on the battlefield mostly um but there are a bunch of weaknesses uh, where i would say you aren't really you, you are missing the two strongest colors i think in blue and green Black is a strong color for removing things, but you already had that pretty much in red and white. So you are not really solving many of the most important weaknesses, but you are really focused on the battlefield. So you will probably win there. Do focus on that and do make sure that you are forcing your opponents to be in that combat zone as much as possible. And you do have a shot with this color combination. If you want to be all about the explosive plays if all i said about that is really making you excited to play magic um i think this is the color combination for you green blue and red it's temer really focuses on getting you quickly to your game plan and making it really big and splashy it combines the strength of green with the wisdom of blue so that really makes for a color combination that gets there quickly and the passion from red means that you have some really big plays to come up. I think the prime commander example because of it is Flops the Fool. You want to be random in your ways but you want to do them big. And Flops the Fool does exactly that. It says play an additional land on each of your turns. And whenever you play a land or cast a spell draw a card if you have no cards in hand otherwise discard a card so you will have only one card in your hand and drawing another one whenever you play it you don't care about what you're playing but you want it to be big you are great at ramp and card draw you want to play really big creatures or really big spells doesn't matter as long as it is really splashy you are quick with it and again explosive so if you want those big splashy effects go with this color combination you do have some weaknesses i would say you do need to be reliant on your really big plays so either you will need to be really really good at ramping which you could be but i think is the least fun way to play this uh, strategy uh, or you are reliant on your big plays and if they are countered then you might be really sad um but when they do get through you are really happy so it really depends <laughs> um play this smart and you will have a lot of fun with your big splashy plays white black and green together make absan which is a weird type of family oriented uh flavored color combination it's all about working together but also being sacrificed for the greater good is really prevalent in this color combinations philosophy um so you are about protection but you are also about sacrificing all of your creatures um but then you're bringing them back and then you're sacrificing them again so it's basically what you want to do here um i think the prime commander example is nethroi the apex of death from ikoria um 
a big cat that can be mutated onto other creatures and when you do mutate it onto other creatures or when you mutate something onto it you return any number of target creature cards with a total power 10 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield which is all about those small creatures that work together which you can then get a lot of, um, of them back uh, because they have less than 10 power <laughs> um, probably they have zero or one power and they are still strong together so that's how them dying and you bringing them back but them being small works together um, some strengths are that you are really great at graveyard recursion because you have that golgari and you have the small creature um, advantage of the celestia color combination um, you have some weaknesses because you are a bit slower in drawing a bunch of cards uh, you will need a little bit of life gain for the resources that you are losing but all of the colors do work really well together to make sure those weaknesses aren't that strong on the forefront um, you aren't in the spell slinging colors uh, but you do have great removal um, so be sure with what you are doing be really smart with the creatures or pieces of your opponents that you are removing and i think you will be great uh, at controlling the board anyways now onto four colored combinations which are all about the color that they are not so for example we have blue black red and green without white um which means they are not about working together at all they are about chaos destruction with maybe a bit of nature but a focus on manipulating and being there for yourself uh, there aren't really a lot of commanders that are four colored themselves uh Yidris is an example here um so it's an ogre wizard which i think is already fitting for the color combination and it says whenever you deal combat damage to a player as you cast spells from your hand this turn they gain cascades so you are really being big with your spells and really want to um, create a lot of a lot of chaos and you want to ramp quickly towards those big spells that you want to cast some strengths are that you have access to really powerful spells i would say really explosive turns as well because you are cascading for example in this case um, and you have strong spell synergies but you are missing uh, protection pieces for example or really specific uh, pieces of removal the thing is the most pressing weakness of four color decks is that you need a great mana base and that makes your deck slower so you are always controlling in it in some sense and winning the game with big spells can be hard to do to get to now if we remove blue we get red green white and black and now we have we miss a little bit of planning so we are a really aggressive color combination, a really direct one, focused on combat, and we love to keep attacking and never stop. Saskia the Unyielding is our commander here. Uh, she says, you choose a player, so you make an enemy right away, and whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to the chosen player. So preferably you are cho choosing the strongest opponent that you can't get to, um, you are attacking the other players and then you first kill the opponent that you picked so you are picking a fight with the strongest player you want to do that not because it's the strategic thing to do but because you are aggro you are all about combat damage and you want to win with a wide board of strong creatures you are fast you are aggressive you can have strong creatures and you want to focus on hitting one opponent while pressuring the rest but you are really focusing on killing that one person um, your weakness is that you can run out of steam more quickly but again your biggest weakness is that you are four colors then if we drop black uh, black we should get a sort of uh, group hug strategy we focus on unity teamwork peaceful growth and some political strategies uh, commander here is kinaios and tiro of Maledis or Melidis, or they are from Theros anyways. Um, at the beginning of your end step, you draw a card, and each player may put a land card from his or her hand onto the battlefield, and then each opponent who didn't do that draws a card. Meaning, basically, you uh, draw a card, and then each player may put a land card from their hand onto the battlefield, and the opponents can choose not to do that, and then draw a card. 
So your opponents choose, you get a little bit more. Um, you work on your civilization. That's basically what you want to do. You want to build a big castle. No one can attack you and you are doing your thing. Building enchantments, building artifacts maybe and winning through a really defensive strategy where you're ramping fast and getting enough cards while opponents don't want to attack you because you're helping them as well. Your weaknesses are that you do need that clear win condition and you need to build it yourself. Um, and if people know that you have that win condition, which you kind of should say, um, you're not really group hog anymore. <laughs> so either you love playing the group hog player um, or you're still competitive, but not really. <laughs> Now the artifact colors, which miss green, which is really important because then you're missing great ramp. Blue, black, red and white do make for a color combination that's all about being great with artifacts and manipulating them, getting them into your graveyard, getting them back. And they love being a control and combo strategy. Brea is a great uh, commander for this color strategy because she is a great combo piece you need a lot of mana but you are able to make that in these colors weirdly enough you don't have ramp but you can make explosive amounts of mana uh, with this color combinations through com combo pieces um, you are all about sacrificing getting a lot of value and slowly taking over the game because you are all about those pieces you do need to get the pieces on the board and your opponents can dismantle them but if they don't know which pieces to dismantle you can be really strong as you are also great at controlling the board. Um, some weaknesses are that you do need your artifacts. So if your opponents are really great at removing them, um, you could struggle. And you can struggle if you are unable to assemble those pieces and really make your combos work. So you do need to think really well about how you are going to win um, and what your plan is, what you need. And you need great strategy. And here we have the most used commander attracts up raider's voice all about those uh, plus one counters this color combination misses red but we don't really mind we are a slower strategy um but not really <laughs> um we are working on uh growth slowly growing our creatures for example in this case maybe our planeswalkers through pl proliferation and making sure we you sure we use our resources well um well, this color combination is all about plus one counts right now, but it could also be about controlling your opponents, um, making sure the game goes slower and slowly building your value. Um, in this case, because we have so few commanders, this is all about proliferation. So it could also be a planeswalker strategy if you're looking for that. Um, it does have some weaknesses. It does lack that uh, speed. <laughs> So you are slower to finish games if you don't know how to set up. But if you have the strategy, I don't think you need to worry about that in this color combination. And that's also, I think, why this is so popular. And then five colors. I think this is a fair choice. Uh, five colors, of course, means you are playing all aspects. So not really a lot to say there. You don't have weaknesses, uh, except for the fact that you have a really hard to build mana base. So... Um, all of your games will be about that probably or you need to focus on some of the other colors and you can still splash the other ones um, so think about how you're building your uh, mana base around your strategy um, i think a prime commander example here is kenrith the returned king because he is still so versatile a lot of other five color commanders really focus on their theme like dragons um, but this one just works with everything if you want. It can do graveyard recursion, can do card draw. Just needs a lot of mana for you to use those big abilities. Um, some strengths are just... I think the best reason to build this is that you have all colors. You can play every cool card that you want. And there's always a place you can put them in uh, because you have a five color deck. I think that's really why you should choose this. Personally, now here's the advice part, I would say focus on um, if you're playing and you are looking for your first deck, make sure that you are picking, I think, three colors, maybe two, so that you are really versatile and you don't have as many weaknesses as the uh, fewer amounts of colors have. 
Um, and I would say you really need the strong colors as well. Now, if you are lo looking for a next deck or maybe your fifth or 10th or 100th, I would say really pick what you want to play right now. What kind of strategy do you want if you are looking for your next commander? Uh, maybe it's a nice idea to pick your colors first. Make sure that you um, have a strategy that you love at this moment. And I would personally say try to have as many different types of combinations. So if you already have a Celestia deck, don't build another one. Maybe try uh, Rectos next or something, or maybe you're trying uh, Crixus um, to have uh, the, all the other three colors um, so that you are really diversifying your uh, your decks. So you have multiple types of strategies that you can play in multiple types of moments. That's really the best advice I can give. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye.